again. It looks like it's all over. The dream of back-to-back -back pennants is all but there as far as the Hawks are concerned. There's the siren. Nine goals from Ablett. The Norm Smith medalist would not be enough to get Geelong over the line. The Cats boasted the most potent forward line in football. Blight's decision to move Ablett to full forward was a masterstroke and the star kicked 100 goals three years in a row. It was a whole new role for me from going from a half forward line to full forward. Um, you know, Malcolm was tremendously helpful along the way, gave me some tips because you know, he played a full forward at some stage in his career. So that was a great help. Um, but other than that, I really just had to learn myself, really. And with Billy Brownless or Barry Stoneham at centre half forward, they were a team to be feared. From a standing start, what did he do this time? Kick a goal, number eight. Blight would lift his men into two more grand finals in 92 and 94. And both times they would face the Eagles of Mick Malthouse. After the 80 point loss in 1994, Blight would stand down. Into his place stepped Gary Ayres, and in his first season, the dual Norm Smith medalist would take the Cats into the grand final against Carlton, a team that had lost only two games for the season. It would be another disastrous day, a 10 goal loss and for many, their fourth grand final defeat in seven years. Scenes more becoming of winners as thousands of Geelong fans welcomed home their devastated side at the Town Hall last night. I'm just speaking my better side of the day. So once again, thanks for your support. At the moment, still, I don't find footy at all. It's only the early days, I suppose, you just start talking silly because you've got to try and think of excuses. The people, I suppose, deserve uh, a lot more than uh, what we could give them today. And, you know, I mean, we'd like to sort of show appreciation and uh, win a premiership for them. And it's just like a death in the family, you know. Uh, just you feel for uh, each, uh, each of the players, you know, your wives and all that, and also the supporters who have been fantastic. Geelong still had you know, a good lead-up and good preparation into the finals, but something lacked on the day you know, on grand final day. So I think the town dealt with it pretty well. I mean, there was times when you didn't want to go into the streets in case, you know, people were going to run you over because you lost a, a grand final. And the thing as a player, as what you develop is there's so much happens outside of you just playing a grand final. There's like, there's people who are coming together and having barbecues and, you know, they set up a great big day, the Geelong people, you know, and they, if they can't get to the grand final, they're having days at home and they make a, such a big deal of it. And you'd sort of let those people down. They come away from the day and, oh, bloody hocking or Ablett or this sort of thing, and they, they might sort of, you know, uh, be saying bad things about you. But, I mean, they obviously people would, you know, have a bet on the footy, you know, that they're losing good money, it's targeted back to you because you lost the grand final, that sort of thing. So I'd start to learn as a player just to sort of individually just keep away a little bit, to stay at home, be a bit sheltered and reclusive after the grand finals. But once footy started again, there's no doubt, hey, you know, I've still got the, the hurt in the belly, the, the fire there to, to play and to get back there again. I just, something just lacked on the day. And I guess I've spoken to Malcolm about it. You know, I've had con general conversations with other players and, and, and uh, Gary Ayres who coached 95, you know, it's just something hasn't come out or something hasn't raised its head to say, well, this is what happened on the day. It would be 12.